Welcome back. So let's discuss what this nn.py class consists of and how you can go about making changes in it. So first of all, uh, I'll try to tell you how Doxygen works, right? So you don't have to understand all the commands Doxygen offers. I, uh, I certainly don't have understood all the commands, but what I have understood is how to generate uh, a very simple documentation. So whenever you uh, make a function, right? So in, in the beginning, if you include a comment, it will automatically be generated as a description of the function. So for example, in the constructor here, I have included this uh, multi-line comment. And when I have run Doxygen, which I will show you uh, in this video, how to run Doxygen, then this comment will automatically be added as the documentation of this function, this init function. So you can really see this. Uh, I have written the exact same thing here and it has generated a an HTML file, well designed HTML file with that documentation, right? So this is why I have included comments in the beginning of every function explaining what it does, what parameters it takes and what it, what values it returns, right? And this is the description of the class, you know? So when you look at this, uh, classes and uh, yeah, so when you visit these classes, it will describe what each and every function of this class does, right? So this is it. So yeah, first I've imported NumPy, as you all know NumPy is the linear algebra library for Python. It's the go-to linear algebra library for Python. It's open source and it is one of the best libraries. Uh, even TensorFlow and PyTorch, they both have functionality and they both both support uh, NumPy. It's very, very important library. You should know the basics and it's very easy to pick up. And there are a ton of resources available online to pick up these uh, skills and most of the operations offered are elementary and most we will use just few few operations such as matrix multiplication adding and subtracting and calculating logs which is just straightforward so you don't have to spend an entire week learning all this project uh, all these uh, skills related to numpy so let's just quickly start so first i'll be cleared here the class and then and then this is the constructor so it will take two uh, variables two two parameters First is layer dimensions and second is activation. So first one is the dimension of layer. So you know, a list, it, it is generally a list containing the dimension of each layer. In, uh, first there can be a input layer, then a hidden layer, then a second hidden layer, or just one hidden layer, and then the output layer, right? So the dimension of that. Then it will take activation, the acti a list of activations of each layer. So for example, the first uh, layer can be activated using ReLU function and the second can be activated using softmax function or the second the output layer is not activated at all in case of regression so all of that so for example let's just see how what I intend so this is a test run where I'm initializing NN so see the first list contains the para layer parameters the uh, and the second and the second argument contains the activations that I'm using right so I'm using 10H, you should always use ReLU, but we'll get to that in a minute, this is just a test case. So for in this case, I have intended that my input will be will, will have two uh, features and then the next, hit, next layer, the hidden layer will have 15 features and then the finally the output layer will have uh, two neurons, which means that it is a two class classification problem or yeah, of course a classification problem, not a regression. So there's that and then in the comment section, it describes clearly what this uh, init function does and it describes as networks, weights, and other useful variables. And then you can just uh, skip through all of that. Now, what's important is here, what's important here is cache and grads, right? So cache is, well, as the name suggests, it's a cache. It will store useful intermediate values in this way, right? So uh, the, f the cache will contain intermediate values, intermediate results in this form. So and later on in this video, I'll explain why it will contain all of this in this form because we can use the intermediate values in calculation of uh, back prop and forward prop and it will be really helpful. It will save you a lot of time. There's that and grads will contain, they both are, uh, grad is a dictionary, of course, and cache is not a dictionary, it's a list. So it will contain, grad will contain D A I minus one and D W, which means derivative of weights, W denotes weights and B denotes bias units. So there's that. Uh, you should all, uh, if you are watching this video, you should know about bias and weights, and so I just skip it through. 
and then initialize parameters. So what this function is doing is it is calling initialize parameters on layer dimension. So it will automatically initialize the weights according to the layer dimensions. So how are we doing that? So let's just see. Uh, we are randomly choosing uh, to initialize uh, the parameters, the weights using random distribution, uniform random distribution and each of the layer, e each of the weights will be of the dimension layered, uh, the, this layer dimensions uh, multiplied by the previous layer dimensions. So this is the situa situation here and you can easily figure that out if you are, are experiencing NumPy, right? And then we have initialized the parameter uh, bias parameter to zero and it will be of layer dimensions into one that it will be its dimension now a linear forward function so to calculate a linear forward what it, what you do is multiply uh, weight by the activation of previous layer and add bias to it and that's exactly what we have done here to calculate the z which is uh, the input for the next layer what we have done is we have multiplied which is a dot we have we are calculating dot product so it is an numpy function w dot a previous plus bias that's the bias unit and then here here's uh, here we'll store a linear cache we'll store a previous the weights and the bias of this particular layer and then return z and linear cache right and we will use this linear cache later on now activate what activate does is it will take z which is uh, an activated layer and the number of layer which is default set to one the layer number which which layer we need to activate right so now activation cache is uh, is another cache uh, that we will store the activation value into it right oh sorry the unactivated value the deactivated value what you can whatever you want to call that right so in the initializer if you have gone through this code in the initializer it's in the constructor we have this activations right which we have passed and we have saved this in self dot activation so we we know which uh, activation function to use for that particular layer so in the activate it will check the layer number right if the activation is relu then uh, from relu activation and 10 h and sigmoid i will add more functions to add and then it will return act, uh, the activated layer and the activation cache now this is forward function right it will for propagate through entire layer and it will make use of these functions activate as well as linear forward functions so that's why i made this both uh, private i guess i should make them public because you should be able to use all this for uh, all these functions but you won't use them separately so if when you call forward what it will do is it will start from one to the number of layers and then it will call self dot parameters which we have already generated using that using the constructor w and b and then we will calculate z and linear cache using linear forward and a and activation cache using activation function and then we will concatenate these two linear cache and activation cache and then we will append this to the self dot cache and this is the same format here right see activation of previous layers weights bias and then the unactivated layer of this particular this particular layer right so there's that so it, it, it will all start to make sense once you read the code again right so inside the loop uh, we have done that and then for the last layer we will have to implement it again self dot parameters and we are storing this weights and biases and then we will calculate linear forward and then uh, we'll activate the layer and then append it right there's that nothing fancy but one thing to keep in mind is why we need to implement the last layer separately is because the last layer might not have an activation function because in the case of regression you don't need an activation function so here it is specifically checking that if activations the length of activation is equal to length of parameters by 2 which is if there is an activation function then you need to activate this again and store it in uh, in the cache but if there is no activation required the output is just same as the unactivated layer right and there is this another function forward up to let's just say you don't want to forward propagate the entire layer you just want to propagate up to layer number here so it will propagate up to there i don't need i i don't think i need to explain what this function does it's it's very obvious right and then this is mle mse loss which is mean squared error loss so it will take prediction and mapix you know the prediction which a function has predicted the output of the network and the real outputs right 
so it will change self dot cost function to MSE loss here we I have not explained this this is another variable cost function it will store what kind of cost function we are using it will help it will be really helpful while calculating backward propagation right so we were here it will change the cost function to MSE loss and then it will use the MSE loss formula to calculate that you can find the MSE loss formula anywhere on the internet it's very famous and then there is this called cross entropy loss the parameters are same what it does is it will add cost it will change the cost function to cross entropy loss and then it will use it is a very complicated formula it looks complicated it's not that complicated you can get it on the internet then output backward right so what output backward does is it calculates the backward propagation or the DA the derivative of activation function which is the derivative of the output layer right so I, I have just used the straightforward formula so here is why we have changed this self dot cost function to cost entropy loss now this function knows to that if the cost the self dot cost is equal to cross entropy loss then the DA is something like this like, like this and if the uh, loss function used is MSE loss then the loss function is something entirely different so that's why we have used it right now it will calculate the derivative of the output layer and return that and then we have this another layer called deactivate so it is it calculates the derivative of activation layer again it will take DA which is the derivative of activated layer and then the layer number uh, the, no the layer number of which we want to calculate the uh, of which we want to calculate the deactivation right so it will again access activation cache from self dot cache you can figure that out easily and then uh, it will store dz as activation cache actually there's a bit of bug in this code because I should have named it z not dz because dz means a derivative it is not a derivative I'll fix that so just you know ignore that and so if activation function used is relu this will be the deactivation again the derivative of relu is available online and if the activation function uses tan h it will it will store this in deactivation function and so on and if there is no deactivation function used which in the case of regression then deactivation will be equal to z but again this is a bug because I've used dz here so I will fix that anyway and then it will return the deact now linear backward it will take the da and the num layer number right it will compute the linear backward of this particular layer so it will use the formula for you know we, again we are this is why we have stored the value in cache this is why cache is useful we are using cache again and again and again so you can see right here you can figure that out why we have used so it will calculate dz dw db and uh, the derivative of previous layer with respect to activations these are all standard formulas these are available on the internet so I uh, I already told in previous video that you sh uh, if you are if you have already implemented some of these functions before if you are not a complete beginner then proceed watching this video right so I don't expect that you don't know the dot products and how to calculate derivatives these standard formulas are available online everywhere so you can just check it out right so I have made few assertions just for testing the program you don't have to worry about that I was just making sure the shape is same so that there are no bugs and it will return dw db and da previous so it's written right here so again the documentation so if you have read the documentation you will have no problem but I'm just explaining this for the sake of explaining this right now this is a backward function it will use the loop to backward propagate the entire layer just as forward used two helper functions it will use two helper function linear backward and deactivate the forward used linear forward and activate and again these functions I made these functions public so what this will do is it will just store the layer numbers and whatever and now it will call linear backward on each of the layers and then store all the grads in self dot grads right this is it self dot grads dw plus uh, str l plus one which means that dw1 dw2 just like that it will store all the uh, grads in the dictionary along with their name right so that's how dictionary works right so this is a test run you will understand this here I have generated a random data a random test case fake test data or training data so you know I don't generate random numbers and then squared that and then I have initialized the neural net the first layer is it takes two uh, inputs and then the hidden layer is size is 15 and then it will output two again so here you can see the 
size of the input is 2 into 100 which means each input has 2 units and then in both the layers I have used 10h activation functions and then I have tested all these functions and they are working fine and I have printed the shape of A which is the output and the result was fine so I thought that it's right and it is right so yeah there's that and yeah I right now I'm here I'm implementing backward now I guess I'll start implementing the gradient descent the standard one and then the other atom optimization so of course if I have explained it all really fast if you don't get anything you can just read the documentation everything is well laid out there and one small uh, I guess notice because uh, in the way I'm storing the data is it's something like that I'm storing each data not as a row but as a column right so that's why there is 100 uh, data points and each data point contains two uh, units right so that's why it's 2 into 100 not 100 into 2 not row wise but column wise storing data row wise removes a lot of difficulty from implementation so for example you don't have to uh, add bias units all over again and then then remove during the back propagation you can just simply add bias units uh, using a simple addition operation and not insert or remove rows and columns so that's why it's really helpful so I'm using uh, columns as each data point so yeah there's that so I hope you have understood this code and one more thing I forgot to explain how doxygen works so for example I, I hope that you know how to fork a project so if you fork a project you will get something like uh, uh, I'll just show you here in projects I have this neo yeah so if you fork this project you will get this documentation something like this and you will have to in install doxygen I will link in description how to install it I'm using Ubuntu here you can use any other terminal any other operating system what you have to do is you have to type uh, well let me just show you something oh, I wait a second um, where is the, yeah here it is so when you when you see this when you look at this uh, documentation folder or documentation file you'll realize that it does not include the documentation for linear backward and I guess well let me just see it includes deactivate yeah so it will it does not include the documentation for linear backward and, and deactivate functions and, and backward functions because I just wanted to demonstrate how doxygen works so as you can see there are these comments here so I generate documentation for these three functions right here so let's get started um, open the folder open the terminal uh, or open the terminal here right so once you have doxygen installed what you have to do is you have to make sure that this doxy file I have configured this doxy file so you have to have this doxy file yeah you cannot delete it so once you have installed oxygen just go ahead and run in this folder inside this folder doxygen and type exactly doxy file ca with capital D doxy file and it will generate all the things and then if you reload this HTML project it will have see the linear backward and the backward function if you click on that it will show you the documentation right so there this is how you generate a documentation so if you are thinking of contributing something make sure you contribute and then generate documentation if you cannot then no problem I will generate that but just contribute it will be helpful to others if you can find and fix bugs and improve documentation so yeah there's that and I will keep on adding new features to this so make sure you follow this repository and yeah see you again next time goodbye